Okay, with this video, what we're going to do is take a look at um, how you can identify or, or characterize the key up characteristics of a radio transmitter. And the examples we'll use here are a couple of handheld uh, amateur radio transceivers. This first one uh, is a Yaesu FT470, and it's a dual band uh, radio that's probably, I don't know, 20, 20 plus years old, 2 meters and 440. And the other one here is a Kenwood. This is a tri-band handheld transceiver, 2 meters, 440, and uh, 220. Um, and we'll take a look at uh, what these transmitters do during key up, you know, how they behave. And you'll see that even though they're both amateur radio transmitters, they both behave quite differently uh, upon key up. And these kind of this kinds of measurements can be used to really help you identify a transmitter, you know, in, in a crowd of, of transmitters type of thing. So uh, what we're going to use is this real-time spectrum analyzer here from Tektronix. And, uh, and how we're going to sense the output of these rigs is this little uh, kind of setup I've got here. Let me kind of pull this up into view. Uh, so basically what I've got is just a, uh, a old BNC cable going into that will connect up to the transmitter. And that's going into this guy, which is just a little RF sampling T. So it's just a, a through coax here to this 50, uh, you know, 5 watt, uh, 50 ohm termination here. And then this is just a variable sampling T. We can kind of just uh, pull this in or out to kind of adjust, uh, you know, how much coupling we get. And then that's going into the input of the spectrum analyzer over here. So, uh, so we're not going to transmit out over the air. It's going to transmit into the dummy load and, uh, and then be able to characterize what the transmitter is doing. So I just uh, hook the uh, coax up to this transmitter and we'll turn it on. And if we look carefully here, we can kind of see that it's at uh, oh, 146.55 megahertz. That's going to be our test frequency for, uh, for this particular uh, set of measurements. Now let's take a look at this on the spectrum analyzer. So let's just kind of zoom in a little bit on that. And uh, we'll kind of uh, zoom in on the display here. Okay. And uh, so in doing such here, let's see. What I'll do is uh, key up the transmitter, and we'll see a couple things. Uh, I can see uh, you know, my voice being picked up by the transmitter and uh, we can actually see that's as an FM transmitter you can actually see the the modulation here um, but what's also interesting is you know, what we really want to do though is characterize what this thing's doing uh, during key up primarily because that's kind of a good way of identifying you know maybe what a transmitter looks like so I'm going to uh, not say anything and, and key this transmitter a couple times and, and watch the spectrum what we're looking at by the way is a, uh, a composite spectrum that's composed of making about 300,000 spectrum measurements per second and then showing all the results on a display color coding essentially the density how often uh, each area is occupied so if I, uh, if I unkey and I'll just key this thing a couple of times and, and take a look at the, uh, the display and, uh, and we'll kind of look at what we're seeing you notice as I key and unkey that we're occupying a whole bunch of spectrum. <laughs> so uh, I've got this thing, we're looking at a 20 kilohertz span here. I'm gonna take the span and bump it up to about 100 kilohertz. So in doing that, you know, it's a little tougher to see you know, the modulation, but let's uh, do the key and unkeying here again. So we kind of see that uh, we're occupying a fair amount of spectrum. I mean, nearly 100 kilohertz or more um, you know, during key up and key down. So um, let's uh, let's go characterize what that's doing with this analyzer. We can actually capture some of that over time. So let's go add a couple of displays here and uh, and take a look at what we can see. Uh, let's bring a couple of displays up here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to set this up to I've got this set up to capture data when I key up. So let's just watch it. Okay, so in doing that, I can see a couple of things here. I've got a couple displays. Let's look at this display down here. This one we call a spectrogram. And this one allows you to look at the spectrum and how it varies over time. In fact, what we'll do is let's uh, kind of make that bigger. And I'll zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, and what we can see is that when this thing keys up, that the signal kind of comes up from high frequency and then kind of goes low, comes back high, goes low, and ultimately settles back out again. Okay, and we kind of zoom, compress this back out, we can actually see that. So I can actually see the key up characteristic here, that the, the spectrum actually wiggles around quite a bit before it finally settles out. In fact, we can make a quick measurement of how long that takes. If we, if we say key up is happening right about there, 
move another marker here and say we're settled out right about here. And the time distance there is about 25 milliseconds. So the first 25 milliseconds of that key up, okay, is kind of this wiggly type of thing. Okay, it's kind of interesting. We could also bring up a display called a frequency versus time, which is kind of an FMD mod. Okay, and if we take a look at uh, that characteristic, that's this display right here. So here now the vertical, this vertical axis is frequency deviation. The middle of it is, is right at, you know, essentially our center frequency of 146.55. And I've got plus or minus five kilohertz. So each division here is about a kilohertz. And then the horizontal axis here is time. Okay. And we zoom in on this, we can actually see at this, uh, right at the beginning here, we can actually see that wiggling characteristic that we were looking at earlier. Okay. And uh, in fact, we'll, we'll just kind of bring this back up here as well on the, uh, on the spectrogram. Okay. So let's bring that right back into view here. There we go. And if, you know, as I mar move that marker through here, I can actually see how the spectrum is changing over time, how the, the frequency deviation is changing over time. So this is kind of a unique characteristic. So if you were able to catch, if somebody was doing something uh, or using a transmitter, you wanted to try to identify it, if you could capture it off the air, you'd literally be able to see this characteristic and say, hey, that's that transmitter. So, um, so let's go look at um, a dip, the, the other transmitter I have here and see, uh, see what we can see with that one. So I'm going to change some of these scales back uh, for us and then uh, we'll go back and look at that. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to uh, the other transmitter that I have here. Let's go bring that up on the big DPX display. So I'm going to switch over to my Kenwood, turn it on. There we go. And hook the uh, transmitter up to it. And if we look at this one here, this one is also sitting at 146.55 megahertz. So if I can get you a picture of that without the glare. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not. There we go. Okay. So now I want to key this one up. Let's look at what it looks like. And let's see, we've got to tell this thing to run. There we go. So now I can see this one. I can see myself talking. Let's just uh, kind of key up and key down a couple times and see what we can see. Well, certainly this one looks a little bit more, a little bit better behaved. It's not occupying nearly the 100 kilohertz of bandwidth that the other one was. So what we can do is we can cut our span down here. Let's go down to about 20 kilohertz. So now I can actually see, you know, there's my voice modulation again. And now let's look at what this one is doing with, uh, with key up. So interesting, I'm, I'm doing this a couple of times, so maybe you can see what I'm seeing. I can see a couple things. If you look carefully, there's two things that I'm looking at. One is you can see that the, the carrier, when it comes up, comes up about, one, you know, one and a half to two kilohertz low and then scoots up to this center frequency fairly quickly. But also less quickly you'll see a couple of sidebands right about here where I've got the mouse and then right about over here where I've got the mouse that take almost a half a second to completely die down. Little couple low, very low level modulation sidebands. So I'll be quiet again here while I key up and down and, and take a look at that. So watch the, uh, the center frequency, how, how it scoots over. But then also see those sidebands right about over here and the same on the other side. So that's real time. I was just literally being able to see those things kind of die away in time here. So let's look at that with the same kind of displays we were looking at earlier. Okay, so I'm going to key up and we'll just watch this thing. So kind of interesting, we can, uh, let's uh, kind of zoom zoom through this display. So things look a little bit cleaner here, okay. Uh, we're not getting uh, nearly as much of, um, you know, the same type of disturbance and, and wackiness that we're getting a key up with the other one. So let's go actually take a look at it. We'll do a quick little quiet key up and go look at it. All right. So now if we look at, say, that spectrogram we were looking at earlier, which is kind of looking at how the spectrums change over time. If I grab this marker, we can actually see this. You know, actually, I'm going to close this display to make this guy big. Let me pan this down a little bit so I can kind of see better. So now if I kind of look at the, at, right at the key up characteristic, it comes up slightly. You know, right here at this point in time, right after key up, I'm sitting about uh, oh, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 kilohertz low in frequency. And the thing kind of 
scoots over over time and finally settles out about the about you know carrier fre uh, center frequency right about there so it takes oh let's see in this case let's kind of look at this about 80 milliseconds or so to kind of settle out to you know within a few hundred hertz of uh, you know of final frequency but it's taking even quite a bit longer if you look at these little sidebands over here it takes quite a bit longer for those things to kind of go and die away I get all the way down to here where they're finally in the noise right about way down here and that's uh, that's a little over 400 milliseconds later so there's those little kind of modulation sidebands here that um, we can kind of see that are uh, are sitting way out over there in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a marker on this so I can um, let's go tell that marker to be on a spectrogram tray so I can actually see where those things are and uh, I pull that marker over here. So there's that marker. He's sitting, oh, about two kilohertz off frequency, so uh, off of center. Actually, let's do this. Let me take my reference marker as well, put that over here. That's, that's what we want to do. So now I can see this marker here is sitting about five kilohertz off of center. This one's sitting about five kilohertz on the other side. So I've got some kind of five kilohertz modulation, like a ping, if you will, that's kind of dying away as this thing keys up here. So, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, if we look at that, uh, that other display we looked at before, the frequency versus time characteristic, okay? Um, and with this one, we can see it's uh, kind of a clearer type of uh, a thing going on here. I can literally see that um, you know, the transmitter is not going through these wild oscillations, if you will, when uh, this keys up. We just got this kind of smooth characteristic right here of, uh, you know, about, you know, it comes down, let's see, kind of move this marker down into the trough here. We're down around 1.8 kilohertz and it very smoothly and, and you know, cleanly goes up to center frequency. So kind of interesting that we can characterize, uh, you know, these two amateur radio transceivers, you know, this little uh, uh, Kenwood THF6A and this older Yaesu uh, FT470, both designed for the same purpose, but both behave quite differently upon key up with some unique characteristics that could be used to identify them if you ever needed to. So anyway, that's a quick little uh, view of uh, what you could do with uh, a real-time spectrum analyzer to characterize uh, the transient characteristic of transmitting devices.